Hello, everybody, and welcome back to PokePaint, the series where I draw Pokemon to inhabit my fan-made Pokemon region based on Florida, the Gladios region. I think it's about time I get around to my Ultra Collab video, as I was tagged back in, what was it, September? Oh yeah, I best get on that now. Uh, for those of you who are unaware, the Ultra Collab is an annual challenge put out to fellow Pokemon creators, prompting artists to draw Pokemon around a certain theme. I participated last year when the theme was Cryptids, if you remember, uh, but this year the prompt is Duology. I was tagged by Vanilia with Gipster, who uh, did their own entry uh, again a few months ago. Um, their video can be found up here. And at the end of this video, I will be prompted to do the same to tag fellow creators after I've given my own take on the idea. So duology is definitely a more freeing prompt than cryptids, as I feel there's a lot more wiggle room here with the types of designs that can be made. I chose to interpret duology in the way that I decided to make a set of what are called counterpart Pokemon. Counterpart Pokemon reoccur in most generations and are usually two separate lines that are tied together either by a unifying theme or by being version exclusives that are opposite each other. Two of the more famous examples uh, being Electabuzz and Magmar, as they are version exclusives and they are both nondescript elemental monsters uh, that got a baby form in Generation 2 and a final form in Generation 4. So this year's Ultra Collab prompt serves as an excuse for me to create a set of counterpart Pokemon that I otherwise probably wouldn't have done. Uh, to keep a little closer to the prompt, I'm gonna give these two lines a unifying theme, that being one will represent the idea of daytime and the other will represent nighttime. I actually uh, designed the final forms first for each of these and worked backwards into the baby forms, but for consistency's sake, I will show you the respective baby forms first. I wanted at least one of these to be a nondescript monster, harkening back to how some Generation 1 Pokemon seem to not be based on any animal or idea. I feel like these more out there designs tend to lead to a stronger region, as those that lack them tend to be some of my least favorite regions. Even with the fact that I tried to be vague, I did still need a jumping off point, so I went with the vague idea of a lizard-ish, bipedal, dinosaur-like monster along the lines of, again, the less obvious inspirations of Generation 1. I imagined that like the real-life inspiration of Florida, that lizard Pokemon would be plentiful here, and I planned to make a couple of different types of monsters representing different kinds of lizards from Florida, starting here with Reptoderm. The idea that this Pokemon vaguely represents beyond daytime is how lizards bathe in the sun, and how sunbathing may be considered a popular activity in a warm, subtropical state like Florida. Reptoderm and its evolution would also represent the vague idea of a day at the beach, with body markings representing sunburns. The first form would resemble a kid full of energy running around at the beach, a fun-filled encapsulation of a sunny day in Florida. The white in the design represents misapplied sunscreen, while the lighter patches are uh, modeled off of common tan lines, uh, where a shirt might be, sunglasses, etc. The name Reptoderm is a portmanteau of reptile and derm, a prefix referring to the skin. Reptoderm, the sun-bathing Pokemon. They are only awake during the day, and can be found in sunny places like on flat rocks and near sandy beaches. Their skin acts like a natural solar panel, absorbing energy throughout the day. In the morning, they will be tired and still, whereas the day goes on, they will become full of energy and scuttle about in small groups to get rid of the energy. If they let off a fire attack that drains too much of their power, they will need to sleep in a warm patch of sun. The evolution would focus further on the idea of a sunburn, and this was again the main idea that I had in my head before I decided that baby forms were necessary. It would have an exhausted expression, both referring to the appearance of sunbathing lizards, but also referencing the lethargic feeling uh, that you get when you have a sunburn. I further expanded on this idea with the red of this Pokemon's skin being an adaptation instead of being the result of overexposure like in humans. This Pokemon, uh, and it 
this Pokemon's skin would act almost like a plant or a solar panel, absorbing energy through solar radiation. Uh, so, in the same way that lizards lay in the sun to increase their body temperature, our Dirapiderm would lay in the sun to charge their fire power. The name Dirapiderm uh, uses the same uh, root words as its pre-evolved form with the addition of the word diurnal, which means to be active during the day. Direpiderm, the sun-bathing Pokemon, and the evolved form of Reptoderm. Far lower energy than their pre-evolved form, they spend their days lying about on warm, sun-baked beaches, soaking up the rejuvenating rays of the sun. As the day goes on, the risk of getting burned by touching their hot skin increases. At night, they bury themselves in the sand where they can keep warm. They let off as little energy as possible during the night and don't battle one another is if they get too tired, they lack the ability to regain their energy without contact with sunlight, and this may put their lives at risk. The counterpart Pokemon that would represent Knight would have a little more of a purposeful design, being based on, funnily enough, a Floridian cryptid called the Skunk Ape. The Skunk Ape is basically Florida's version of the Bigfoot, being a mysterious human-sized creature bipedal, covered in fur, and purportedly smelling awful like a skunk. Uh, the baby form of this Pokemon, Noctape, would resemble a smaller version of the legend, having a dark and furry, vaguely monstrous appearance similar to that of Snover and Obama Snow. It ended up being like a conglomeration of multiple nighttime creatures, which I think is fitting, having the dark hairless fingers and toes uh, of many higher primates representing the ape part of the design, while on the other hand also uh, representing the skunk part of the name with the literal addition of a skunk's tail. The addition of a set of bright, wide, green eyes set into a dark, kind of hard-to-read body gave the idea of a nocturnal creature, and the pose resembles the Bigfoot pose in the Patterson-Giblin film photograph, probably the most famous Bigfoot picture out there. Noctape, the nocturnal Pokemon. They are only active during the night, and a Noctape sighting is exceedingly rare. Up until recently, they were thought to be nothing more than a tall tail in the Gladius region. If one smells something horrendous while on a walk at night, there is a good chance that a Noctape, or Sastench, is the culprit. This horrendous stench that helps identify these creatures originates from the poison gas that they can unleash from the holes in their hands. The final Pokemon of the day representing the idea of night is Sastench, based on the idea of a fully grown skunk ape. Uh, many of the ideas uh, from Noctape carry over here, trying to look unlike any existing uh, idea or animal while being recognizable as a Pokemon. A main idea I had while drawing this was the idea that this Pokemon wouldn't have an apparent nose or mouth, and that this detail would make it feel a little more supernatural or mysterious. Or maybe that this Pokemon does have a nose or mouth, that it's just hidden under the fur. I added these holes in its palms that I imagined were also present in its first form, uh, and these holes would shoot out poisonous gas, referencing the stench that the original skunk ape purportedly has.
Sastunch, the nocturnal Pokemon, and the evolved form of Noctape. They tend to inhabit bogs and ocean river deltas, avoiding more populated areas. They are only active during the night as they have an aversion to sunlight. They are said to have a stench comparable to festering garbage, which scientists have attributed to the poisonous gas that they can expel from their hands. Their rarity led to a regional legend of a man-sized skunk tank roaming the wilderness of Gladius. But as this Pokemon is not naturally found in the region, the legend was thought to be a hoax. Only recently has this Pokemon been discovered and the legend laid to rest. So here are my entries for the Fakemon Ultra Collab 2023. Reptoderm and Direpoderm, who represent day, and Noctape and Sastench, who represent night, together representing the idea of duology. Opposite sides of the same coin, as it were, both nondescript uh, creatures with many similarities and dissimilarities, all at the same time. Now, before I sign off for the day, I should tag two other creators to take a crack at their own version of the Ultra Collab duology video. The first I had in mind is Fruppy Art, uh, an awesome creator who recently finished their region themed around Jurassic Park and who has just started a region themed around parodying the show Gravity Falls. I think that only the first of this series is out, uh, but it is wicked cool so far. I'm really excited to see where it goes in the future. The second creator I had in mind is Curious Chaos. They have a Pokemon region based not on an earthly location, rather uh, the entire region is set in outer space in the Revlar star system. Knowing me and my interest both in drawing Fakemon and in outer space, it should be no surprise that their series, though also very early in its run, as it seems, is one of my absolute favorites. I think they would probably have a really interesting take on this year's theme of duology. Of course, participating is entirely optional, however, I would be really interested in seeing what both of these creators could come up with as they are both so entertaining, passionate, and talented. All that being said, that'll be it for now. I do plan on hopefully making two more videos for this month, one Poke Paint and one History of the Future. Honestly, whatever one comes out next is completely up to chance as I'm creating both at the same time, and I'm getting kind of busy preparing for the upcoming holidays, so I don't really know what I'll have time to work on this week. Uh, as always, if you like this video, then leave a like, and if you want to see more like it, then subscribe, and turn on the bell to get notified when I upload next.